What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode for week 32's video game update. Here's the games we will be covering today. We got uh, just a few of them and it's going to be kind of packed with um, longer segments possibly for at least one of them. So starting off, we're going to start off with World of Warcraft like we do every week and we're going to be covering the hot fixes and then we're going to transition over to Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, Call of Duty Warzone, and then we're going to wind up with some Apex as they just announced a big update and patches coming out uh, soon or at the time of this recording soon. Um, and then we're going to wrap this all up with looking at the, and this is not our listing, okay, looking at the top 10 best crossplay games in 2024. And this is rated upon like player count. This is rated upon uh, basically how many people are actively playing it. How many people have positive things to say about it. Along with mechanisms, achievements, uh, gameplay, and the cross playability. Like how well they actually work together. So we're going to wrap that up. And I'm going to tell you where the, the uh, top 10 comes from. So stay tuned for that. But first up, let's dive in with a little bit of World of Warcraft for week 32 of 2024. Let's get after it, y'all. All right, as promised, first up is World of Warcraft. We are talking about the hot fixes, um, and we're going to go, last week we did all the way up to the 31st, so we're gonna just address August 1st hot fix as well as August 5th hot fix. As that's what's happened in the last week. And yes, I understand one of those did not happen in week 32. It's fine. We're going to cover it because it's kind of important. So, Especially leading up with August 26, uh, 2024, World of Warcraft War Within launches. Um, you can actually start the the opening quest line right now uh, in World of Warcraft. And if, again, if you haven't played and you're trying to get into it, now's uh, the perfect time to do it. Especially if... Uh, like similar to me the reason why you didn't play a whole lot is because the quest lines rotated or not rotate sorry um, involved heavily upon working together for like dungeons to get completed for a quest that's gone they were they removed that a while ago um, so if you're still trying to unlock like the allied races you definitely can and you can skip all the dungeons required to uh, complete that so but more on that uh, later point as we get closer to August 26th, I'll actually do a dedicated video to to just World of Warcraft. So with that said, let's get to August 1st hot fixes are as such. Uh, player characters, priests will now automatically restart Shadow Form after using Ride Along if Shadow Form was enabled when they became a passenger. Uh, quest, the Light Forge and Heritage of Light Forge now correctly directs players to a Light Forge beacon. Uh, Radiant Echo event updated the event so that now, after the zone boss is defeated, memories began resurfacing again, repeating the event immediately. The event now rotates between zones each hour, and whilst the Radiant Echoes are active in the zone, they will remain up for the entire hour. Increased earnings from the scenarios and bosses, which now include Flight Stones and Crests. The event quest is now daily and account bound, was weekly and per character. So that's a big update. Uh, Delarian Defender's gear is now eligible to be upgraded at the Creation Catalyst. Season of Discovery Molten Core. Uh, Molten Core players can no longer line the sight Flame Waker Priest from Solfron Harbinger or outrange them to prevent the cast of Dark Mending. It must be interrupted. Adjusted the recast time and cooldown for Dark Mending so that players can interrupt more sufficiently. Shamans, the Spirit Wolf summoned by Feral Spirits, should now display all four of their active abilities on their pet bar. Warriors, the tier one warrior two piece set bonus technician will now correctly reduce the cost of meat hook. That's all for August 1st. Let's move up to the recent August 5th, which is this week that we're in. Dungeons and Raids, the internal palace, Queen uh, Azarsha, I always butcher this name, Azara, uh, addressed an issue that prevented ethanol and Eighth then Noel, there we go, and Cyranus from properly spawning during the encounter. Endless, I know, I, I read I read it, I understand I'm um, 
mispronouncing some of this stuff, bro, I, it's fine. Do my best. Um, items. Fix an issue that caused weathered, weathered Northrend sigils to activate when it wasn't supposed to. For player characters, they fix an issue preventing uh, Draxir from being able to successfully cast Soar when swimming on the surface. They also fix an issue with the human racial No Place Like Home incorrectly gaining a charge in some situations. Quest players can now properly progress through the Legion experience when selecting the Time Walking Campaign from Chromium. Radiant Echo events, memories of Kalimdor, Easter Kingdom, and Northrend will now stack up to 100 and will no longer drop once you acquire its related essence or have fully created the band of Radiant Echoes. Increase the scaling of Reco... Increased scaling of Radiant Echo mini bosses. They reduce the amount of credit needed to complete several interactions based Radiant Echo events, like Lumber. Delarian Defender Armor piece with Champion Track should now be eligible for conversion at the Revival Catalyst. Season of Discovery. Uh, this is the last up. So Season of Discovery. Each of the each side of the Poacher's Cave tunnel between Searing Gorge and Burning Steps now has an independent cooldown, allowing curious players a quick return option. Smoke asphyxiation still prevents more frequent usage than twice an hour. Druids, Moonkin form now also decreases all threat generated by nature and arcane, arcane spells cast by the druid by 30%. Hunters, with, and this is, this is stated as a developer note, with schedule maintenance. Hunters, the Hunter TNT rune now increases explosive trap initial damage and emulation trap periodic damage based on 25% of the Hunter's attack power. It was 50 it also now uses higher of the melee and range attack power and it was always when it was always melee attack power prior mages fix an issue where the mage healer two-piece molten core set bonus did not work did not work properly the benefits of temporal beacon will now work properly during the last six seconds of its duration when used with this set Fix an issue where the healing from the Mage Regeneration was not increased by the effects of Mage Archive Blast. For Paladins, again this is Dev Note with Schedule Maintenance. Paladins, Retribution, Paladins, and Season of Discovery now gain 6% threat reduction per rank of Vengeance talents, but this threat reduction is disabled while Righteous Fury is active. For Priests, oh, I hate this word, Human Coley, Human Homan Cooley, I'm butchering that one, I know that one. Homan Cooley will now be less aggressive in seeking nearby targets to fight the priests is not in... Guys, you did not write that properly. Human Cooley will now be less aggressive when seeking nearby targets to fight that priest which is not in combat with it. Okay. <laughs> Rogue, the Rogue Six Piece... Count uh, six piece set can no longer trigger incorrectly from sep sepsis poison. Warrior Konsu Konsu sorry should now always speak the correct line when players are victorious. Ugh, big words. I I struggle with English. Come on. All right. So again, uh, War Within debuts August twenty sixth. So it's literally here in just a a less than a few weeks away now uh, 7 14 15 16 17 18 19 days from the recording of this um uh, and it's oh this is gonna be a great dlc if you haven't been playing dragonflight you're missing out this is gonna be fun uh if, if you're interesting in world of warcraft but you're something like hindering you or you just want to see what i would call real gameplay action I'm not saying that just like plug my streaming channel, but if you want to see legit gameplay action from a solo player, definitely come check me out uh, at Cybermark Sig um, over on TikTok, YouTube, Kick, Twitch, um, and see what's like. I'm live at least three or four times a week trying to play this game, game my characters prepped both for Allied and or Alliance and Horde, um, but I'm playing it. 
completely by myself, um, with the exception of like a few dungeons that I'm just trying to do uh, for for me for myself, um, nothing else. So if you want to see what it's like and you have questions, definitely feel free to stop by. Ask me a question. If I can't answer, I'll find somebody who who can. Um, but yeah, I've been playing it without a, being a guild. I've been playing it without needing really anybody else's help, and it's it's awesome. And of course, if you're like me and you do play World of Warcraft and you're trying to figure out like, oh man, I, I'm I'm new to this game or I'm I'm returning, therefore everything feels different and feels uh, out of pocket for you. I highly recommend downloading um, the program Curse Forge. It used to be just called Curse years ago. It's now Curse Forge, and you can download it separate from its entire package if you go find it online just search curse forge on google and it's going to try to tell you to please download this bigger program you don't need it just download curse forge and with course curse forge let's see how many times i can say this name uh, with this you can find and get help with like your rotations of spells how to level up your character based upon whether or not you're a tank a uh, damage person or you're a healer whether or not you're trying to you know get high levels in your professional levels like um, herbalism mining blacksmithing leather work and that type of stuff uh, if you're not familiar with what curse used to be years ago curse forge is the, they got bought out and they rebranded and renamed uh, but it helps you with integrating overlays and mods into the game so where it's easier for you to understand easier for you to uh, find the items that you're looking for whether it's a quest whether it's um, herbs whether it's uh mining ores or that's not what they're called um uh, can't think of this thing whether you're mining like ore or copper or bronze or anything you'll be able to find those a lot easier uh you'll be able to find where certain seat not secret but uh, chests are at and hell it'll even tell you if you should keep the armor that sets you have on or if you should upgrade it even if it's a lower uh, stats or lower level uh, it's very useful i highly recommend it. again we're not sponsored or partnered by them i'm not sponsored or partnered by them uh, by myself but i definitely recommend checking out if you're returning to world of warcraft or if you're like me you just you just want a little extra help um, when trying out new classes it's definitely worth it so but with that said again i will do a whole super deep dive in world of warcraft do's and don'ts and how to help yourself uh how to help you set up your first character um, and much more so but with that said enough with world of warcraft onward to call of duty modern warfare 3 and warzone let's get after y'all all right and for call of duty uh if you if this is like the first time you're you're hearing this or watching this um i they have Call of Duty in two different sections. They have Modern Warfare 3 patch notes and they have Warzone patch notes. Um, so we'll be covering both. And there are certain things that do carry over between the two of them. And if if I recognize it quick enough, I will let you know or I will just skip over it. So I know there's people that say like, hey, you left this out. This was mentioned. Yeah, I didn't leave it out. It's just on one or the other. So it's it's fine. But let's get for the two uh, for August 6th update and patch notes here we go for modern warfare 3 uh, this is season 5 week 3 of their season all right scatter it global uh for customization they fixed an issue preventing the lockman 762 and tac b bow rifles from equipping the bioluminescent camo and they changed the de the default finishing move for rhea ripley operator to riptide okay whatever multiplayer uh, UIX fix, bug fix, fix an issue preventing the Jack Burnout kit from being equipped to the Hollinger 26 light machine gun. For maps, the Get High map, fix an issue preventing the Mosquito drone from targeting enemy players. Modes, Call of Duty Warrior, or sorry, COD Warrior, as they put it, fix an issue causing players to die immediately in the Revive minigame. Revival will no longer occur if a team of less than two players exists. Players down during the revive minigame will no longer be warned for inactivity. Weapons and attachments. Yep, weapons and attachments. 
For the assault rifles, we have the STG-44. They increase a lower left arm damage multiplier from 1.2 to 1.3. Damage dealt to the lower arm is now consistent regardless of which arm you hit. Light machine guns, the RPK. Jack Catac Cataclysm Conversion Kit. Decreased ammunition gain from using an ammunition box from 60 down to 15. That's a decrease of 75%. That weapon... It's, ooh, it's powerful. Uh, we were using it, or I was using it the other week. Um, so that sucks that they dropped it from 60 to 15 because that thing does not hold ammo worth a damn. So they just really try to kill that thing. All right, handguns, the Core 45 XRK IP V2 conversion kit. Fix an issue allowing a faster fire rate than intended. So that's that shot too. Uh, for equipment, the EMP Grenade Tactical Modular Assist Rig Vest can now resupply EMP grenades from dead players. That's all for Modern Warfare 3 Multiplayer. And then for Zombies, they fix some issues with gameplay. The issues fixed are they fix an issue causing the last player to exfil from the match to be queued into another match before viewing the after action report. They also fix an exploit involving safes that allowed players to carry more weapons than intended. That's all of... Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. For Warzone, again, the weapons may be the same. There may be some added, so we'll, I'll cover it. Um, same customization for Global. The weapons they have for Warzone, this is Warzone specific. Submachine guns, the Supreme 46, near mid damage, decreased to 26, down from 29. So it's now 26 instead of 29 the minimum damage decreased to 20 down from 25 so the supri 46 uh got nerfed the wsp stinger akimbo max damage decreased to 20 down from 24 mid near mid damage decreased to 18 down from 22 and min minimum damage decreased to 17 down from 20. the so wsp stinger and the supri 46 got nerfed uh, for the light machine gun, the RPK, which is a Modern Warfare 2 weapon, um, the adjustment is for the Jack Cataclysm Conversion Kit. Okay, that's something, keep that in mind. So the Jack Cataclysm Conversion Kit, max damage decreased to 75, down from 140. Oh, dude, that got nerfed. Damn, okay. Near mid damage decreased to 67, down from 130. Minimum damage decreased to 57, down from 120. Max damage range decreased to 33.02 meters, down from 38.1 meters. Head modifier decreased to 1.5x, down from 2.1. Upper torso, torso modifier increased to 1.3, up from 1.2. Lower torso modifier increased to 1.2, up from 1.1. Damn! We, uh, develop note. We have adjusted the RPK Jack Cataclysm Conversion Kit to make it a three bullet elimination at max range, as long as that includes one headshot. Well, that got nerfed really bad. That's awesome. Thanks. Handgun, uh, we covered this last uh, in the Modern Warfare 3. The XRK IPV2 Conversion Kit, they fix an issue allowing a faster rate of fire. So really this week's... Uh, update is just nerfing weapons they basically nerfed four weapons the supri 46 wsp stinger submachine guns the lmg rpk and the core 45 handguns so that's that's awesome lastly they fix an issue preventing the death marker from appearing after a player is eliminated cool so it's gonna be interesting to see what everyone runs the rpk was what was broken last week so we will see, but if you want to find out which weapons are, or which weapons do really, really well, make sure you tune in Thursday nights um, to watch Roggle and I both play together as we play Call of Duty Warzone. Um, you can watch him on twitch.tv forward slash Roggle, listed down below in the description, or you can come find me at CybermarkSig, again, on Twitch, Kick, YouTube, and TikTok. So, but that's all for Call of Duty. This is probably one of the shorter Call of Duty segments. So let's move on to Apex Legends. And this, there is a lot as a new season dropped. So let's get after it. 
All right, last game for us to uh, talk about the update, and we don't talk about this one too much. Um, I think I've done maybe one or two segments about it, uh, mostly kind of bashing the Season 22 battle pass that they attempted to pass, and it did, did not go very well for them. So with that said, this is Apex Legend patch notes. Um, to be more specific, this is Apex Legend Shockwave patch notes. Uh, uh, Shockwave's launch. With classic perks balance and legend updates and more so let's get into it new energy and more you can grab the squad because the games have a whole new energy drop back into the fight with revivals fill your power surge with akimbos use two new battle sense features to narrow in on your enemies and the heat of fight and more updates that make the outlands legendary for all so let's get after it. There is a new map, the E District. This map was designed to offer players a fresh and innovative experience while it retains the core elements that define a great Apex map. They also push the boundaries by incorporating numerous buildings, emphasizing verti ver vertical ability. I like that word. And creating varied landscapes. These changes ensure some of the most diverse fights and in ring locations across the map. Uh, Shockwave map rotation. The following maps will be available in pubs and ranked for the first half of the season. Broken Moon, E-District, and Storm Point. As an introduction to our to the newest map, E-District will be the dedicated feature map for a limited time. Let the energy of the neon lights energize your squad with each pub match for the first week and each rank map for the first 72 hours of the season. Uh, controller and Recon class perks. This season, they are beginning a much more intentional push on what classes mean to the core of the game by bringing new tactical class pers uh, passives to the controller and recon classes. Both will continue to bring strategic depths to their squad via interactions with the survey beacon and ring consoles, but they will now have new intrinsic powers that better support their role on the team. For a controller class, new class perks will uh, is the zone overcharge controller legends now have an extra shield capacity when playing in zone the zone automatically grants an overcharge a 25 hp shield capacity this capacity is permanent while the player remains in zone white ring area of the map overcharge is lost when leaving the zone after five second delay overcharge can be healed with cells batteries and the abilities within the zone itself if a player enters a zone at full shields, the overcharge PIP overcharge pip will fill automatically. If a player acquires a shield core with overcharges beyond this extra zone capacity, the additional overcharge will still drain normal, but the zone overcharge will remain. Zone overcharge will never enhance legend armor beyond maximum, which is red. Red armor. Uh, new quality of life. Remote pickups. Controller legends now remotely pick up their undamaged tacticals by looking back at them and pressing a button. Additionally, if the player abandons the area, they will be prompted to recover all possible objects. Remotely recovering these objects will restore the tactical charge. Uh, there's a dev note for the controller class. Control legends are at their best when playing for zone position this season. They're rewarding the behavior in the in legends who do not, who don't want to skim the edge of battle hunting for Evo and instead allow them to maintain an equal footing on their armor when playing to their strength. Gaining knowledge of the next ring and keeping in good position will be important for maintaining this advantage. Additionally, the devs note that many new players to the controller class struggle with management of their tacticals. This takes a step forward, making it more desirable to experiment with traps or to feel more comfortable setting up shop with less worry about having to abandon your entire setup to move to a slightly better building. They want controller legends to play with their kit more freely and not have to do extra running around to recycle charges or feel locked into their setup if they choose to move. So that's good. Maybe I'll play Apex again. Recon class. Don't hold me to that, but maybe. Recon class. The new perk, Threat Vision. Recon Legends now gain Threat Vision when aiming down sight. Threat Vision will highlight enemies that the character has line of sight to whenever using ADS, which is aim down sight if you're new to video games somehow. This ability not this ability will not work through walls or smoke, and it's limited in range by the type of scope or zoom range of its ability. Of an ability, there we go. 
survey beacons, this is still in the recon class, remember, survey beacons, faster use, three seconds roughly. It was originally seven and a half seconds. Short, short in range of 500 meters was scanning the entire map. No longer random distributed, and all will now be turned on with every map. Scanning now grants 75 EVO. It was 200 EVO. Now pulses three times over 15 seconds, with each pulse taking a snapshot of enemies in a range for five seconds. Now releases a large in-world scan wave that players can spot to identify an active activated beacon. Enemies no longer receive a scan message. Enemy scan will display along the edges of the mini map, even if not in. Uh, dev notes here Recon legends are defined as legends who are about enemy intel and tracking, which is a core part of character play pattern. But to date, the only class benefit was something players had to seek out via survey beacons. Devs are ratcheting up the scouting role for recon legends this season and putting class power directly in their hands. With ADS Threat Vision, these characters are now adapted at spotting distant targets for their team and now innately do something that no other class can. The class change to Survey Beacons will or should allow players to make them a more tactical part of their play rather than just a strategic element. The full map scan was really only useful to a small number of high-level players, and often the scan message would turn your team into a magnet for other others to hunt. Now being more frequent, faster to use, and giving more intel for longer makes it easier to use the beacon with confidence and hunt the immediate area, or note secure paths out of a POI for a rotation. Sounds very useful. Um, updated stat trackers. They made a huge quality of life upgrade to stat, stat trackers and are separately out of the stat and the art. You'll now be able to set these on your legend banner cards separately the art on your trackers have also been made universal which means you can apply to any legend banner we uh, the devs wanted to give players more way to customize their banner cards and let you show off more than just one legend there it's also a great way to show off your legend ships log in at any point during shockwave to automatically unlock three new stat trackers to add to your mix and match collection all right. Uh, Shockwave Battle Pass. Uh, here's a basically a too long to read synopsis of it. Okay, with the launch of season twenty two on August six, which was yesterday at the recording of this, through Split One, they want to give you an opportunity to get Premium Battle Pass. You can unlock it by completing a series of simple in-game challenges before the end of Split One on September seventeenth at ten p.m. Pacific. Here's the thing. This I know why they did this. I understand why they did this. And this is this is kind of smart. The reason why they did this is when they announced Season 22's Battle Pass, like I talked about before, they got completely obliterated. And I mean, like, everybody, whether you were a hardcore Apex player, a casual Apex player, you used to play and then you quit or you were coming back or you're just new, there wasn't one single player that wasn't destroying EA for this crap they were pulling. Not one single player didn't go after Apex talking about how trash it is that they couldn't use their Apex coins. They couldn't um, get Battle Pass traditionally like they used to. They had to pay for it. It's split. There's two Battle Passes now within a season versus just one. So much more. And it was clearly a money grab. And it just, just absolutely pissed the community off. And it wasn't just wasn't just apex either like that's the thing the gaming community as a whole got a hold of this and saw this and then was like oh my god what the hell this is sh this is complete shit how dare they do something like this this is just a money grab and the <laughs> apex lost a lot of players a lot of active players during that and then they i think it was like a week or two ago now they came back and they said all right, all right, all right, all right. we're changing things up you can now purchase the battle pass via your apex coins but you still don't get all the benefits of your apex coin purchase like you used to so they're still like they gave you some but not everything and it like it's still controversial within the apex community i often see creators still complain about it but they're happy you can you can now purchase the pass with your coins so with that said let's get into it uh again this is with the launch of season 22 which took place august 6th 
through a split, we uh, they wanted to give you access to get the battle pass basically for free. So this is what you have to do. You have to play two matches in trios on a specific map, deal a thousand damage as a recon or control controller legend in battle royale, uh, open fifteen supply bins in any mode, deal damage to in battle royale with a specific weapon, complete ten levels of the battle pass, starting with the split. Starting with Split 2 on September 17th, so this is the second Battle Pass, you can get the Premium Battle Pass the same way as before by using 950 Apex Coins. You'll be able to earn Apex Coins via the Battle Pass to get future Battle Passes too. Uh, the Battle Pass option now includes better rewards, and with the retuned Battle Pass challenges, it will be faster to complete at, at only 60 levels. So, two Battle Passes, each at 60 levels, and it's kind of like, again, this is what's... Uh, making people a little annoyed and just yeah a, a, they're, they're annoyed by it all right and then here comes some patch notes and again this is this is a long segment because there's a lot of stuff that just came out in the last 24 hours of this recording so yeah all right so balancing updates care package the eva 8 returns to the floor blast pattern size slightly increased Damage is increased to 7, it was 8 or 6. Fire rate was decreased, now takes boosted loader hop ups. 4 shots remaining activation, quick reload overflow magazine by 2. Uh, slight increase to the recoil, the R99 enters the care package. ADS strafe, strife speed increase, improved recoil. New feature is damage fall off, damage increased to 14 at close range, damage falls off at. Sorry damage falls off to 10 at 11 plus meters there we go no movement penalty was equipped the evo cash spawn rate in the first wave increased to 100 percent. it was 50 percent gold weapon rotation uh mozambique akimbo p2020 akimbo and r301 rampage and sentinel are on are the golden weapon rotations uh gameplay updates aim assist Console cross-play into PC lobby, aim assist strength reduced by 18%. Console performance mode cross-play into PC lobby, aim assist strength reduced by 22%. Controller on P PC, aim assist strength reduced by 25%. Uh, dev notes, they value, they value our accessibility as a cross-platform game but it's equally important to them to monitor the ecosystem. Experimental stories from all types of players tracks with the data we're seeing when it comes to the encounter win rate between different peripherals. Apex Legends is a competitive shoot shooter and simply put, aim assist is way too strong. Aim assist will never be removed as it's a critical accessibility feature. Console lo lobbies remain unaffected. This only impacts players on controllers and PC lobbies which is our most competitive ecosystem. This change doesn't solve the intricacy of all aim assist hot topics, but it should help level the playground a little bit. Um, aim flinch. Aim flinch has been removed from all weapons and most abilities. Damage from the ring still incurs aim flinch. Dev note. Let's be honest, no one really had love for aim flinch. Uh, they have made a call to eliminate it from all weapons and most legend abilities. However, there are still legend some legend abilities that do benefit from the added feedback, like dunking on someone with a Newcastle alt. Uh, they'll keep an eye on abilities that may need additional feedback as they see how this changes affects the game. Loot bin reset. Starting with Shockwave, all loot bins will, sorry, all loot bins will close and re-roll their loot with a significant increased chance for higher tier and rare loot at the midway point of the match. Bins that have been re-rolled re-rolled will appear slightly different of than ones that have never been opened after the reset multiple bins will convert into legendary loot bins that provide smart loot guaranteeing that the content to be relevant upgrades for a squad mythical bin or mythic bins one mythic bin will spawn into the map sorry into the match with one random care package or care package weapon gold version weapon of those that the squad is running at the time of opening the bin medical supplies and grenades large evo bonus to the squad mythic bins are locked and require players to hold interact on them for a significant amount of time to crack them open for their team 
displayed on mini on the map and mini map. Loot pool respawn. Re, sorry, not respawn. Reduce the spawn rate of purple and gold attachments by about fifty percent. Dev note: access to higher higher tier attachment in the early game has started to feel way too common, which resulted in squashing the power progression over the course of the match. By reducing the amount of high tier loot in early game players, will be fighting off on more even terms. To compensate for this reduction, loot and reset improves the overall quality of loot in the world, which should provide a much smoother transition to the end game power. Reorganization of death boxes and Loba's black market. Healing items now have a dedicated row and have been removed from the consumable category. Shield cores have been moved to the top of the gear category. Dev note states that these items are critical to a player's success in the Outlands, bringing them up to the top with consistent positions should expedite the looting process and eliminate some tedious scrolling for players. Uh, traversal, mantling at the same time in the same spot as a teammate no longer forces both players to drop. Battle sense, better, better ammo awareness and feedback. Critical ammo states will now kick on when a player has zero relevant ammo in their inventory. On-screen low ammo indicator kicks on early, allowing players more opportunity to find ammo. Indicators will or indicators also now display the icon of the ammo type. Pinging ammo pinging for ammo will now display the ammo icon in the kill feed. When emptying a weapon of all reserve ammo, it will now automatically ping the player is in need of ammo. When looking at ammo on the ground, the tooltip now displays compatibility with any of your currently equipped weapons. Dev note, running out of ammo is never fun, and our low ammo states were set up in a way that didn't provide much time or information for players to act on. These changes intend to set players up for more success when it comes to maintaining the ammo economy. Enemy health bar, when damaging an enemy, players are now shown the enemy armor and health state. This health, ooh, this health bar is only active for a brief time after dealing damage and then it fades away. Health bars, like enemies' highlights, require direct line of sight. Enemy highlight. Enemy players will now be highlighted with a red outline similar to how allies are highlighted with a blue one. The highlight is most prominent at close range and the intensity fades as targets get further away. Enemy, enemy highlights require direct line of sight. You can now breathe Bangalore mains. Oh, just take a shot then. Both enemy health bars and enemy highlights can be toggled on and off via settings. Uh, dev notes, visual clarity and accurate information are imperative to a player's success. These new features highlighting and health bars are intended to level the playing fields and combats the intensity of battle. No one likes mag dumping into their squad mates back because they totally thought they were the enemy lifeline. Experienced players can now easily develop the skill to call out health values of their enemies based on the amount of damage they are dealing in the various shield levels, but then for new players, this can be a difficult task. Providing a visual aid for such critical information, we hope to even the playing field for a bit and even the playing field a bit and can provide accurate and actionable information that can be relayed to the whole squad, whether new or experienced. You can really call out that they are, oh, you can now really call out that they're one, me and one shot. Okay. All right. A little bit more. Uh, last section. Here we go. Ammo and attachments. Ammo spawn rate. Energy ammo reduced individual spawn rate. Light and heavy ammo slightly increased to individual spawn rate. Shotgun and sniper ammo increased individual spawn rate. Ammo stack changes. Light ammo stack size increased to 72. It was 60. Individual brick size increased to 24. was 20. Energy ammo stack decreased to 54. It was 60. Individual brick size decreased to 18. It was 20. Shotgun ammo stack increased to 20. was 16. Individual brick size increased to 10. was 8. Uh, dev note here, light ammo weapons have been overshadowed by our heavy and energy arsenal for the last few seasons. With the set of change, we hope, we're hope we hoping the ammo economy for light will improve their viability and earn back a place in players' loadout. Hop on, or hop ups, sorry. Disruptor rounds removed from floor loop. 
new hop-up gun shield generators usable by all LMG, Spitfire Rampage, L-Star, and Devotion. When aiming down sights, automatically deploy, deploy a frontal gun shield. Gun shield absorbs 40 damage. Gun shield is recharged 12 seconds after damage or breaking. Uh, sorry, after taking damage or breaking, my bad. It improves uh, Gibraltar's gun shield. Gun shield health, again, this is for Gibraltar. Gun shield health increases 75. Gun shield recharge time remains the same as his passive. Uh, so that's a lot of information coming from Apex. If you want a more deep dive, you can just go to Apex Legends um, homepage and see all this. Just like if you want to see um, Call of Duty, go to Call of Duty's World of Warcraft, go to World of Warcraft. So but onward to the top 10, and then let's wrap this up. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning in and hanging out. Um, whether you just watch a segment that's pertinent to the games you play or you watched all of it, thank you so much. Uh, again, we covered World of Warcraft with including the new DLC that's coming out August 26, 2024. We covered World of Warcraft, or sorry, we already said that. We covered World of Warcraft, we covered Call of Duty, uh, Black Ops 6 is the latest uh, expansion for that, and that comes out October 25th. And we talked about the massive update for Season 22 of Apex Legends, and we talked about the top 10 um, crossplay video games according to charlie intel so i do hope you took away something from this and again if there's a game you'd like to see us uh, do a weekly update on let us know down in the comments below um we do or i should i do um i try to cover the games i play and roggle plays um though the games roggle plays just call of duty uh for a degree but i also try to include other games in it as well so if there's a game you want us to cover definitely let us know comment dm us message us whatever let us know but otherwise thanks so much for tuning in for week 32 video game updates and patches updates hot fixes and more i hope you enjoyed it and until next time everyone take care stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you on week 33 i guess till then everyone take it easy